Madame Blavatsky and Celeship. In the process of cosmic human evolution, there were always various paths of initiates, adepts, or students. Madame Blavatsky refers to these students as Chalas, those who knew the mysteries of the temple. A Chela is one who follows a hermetic path pertaining to essence. In Raj Yoga, Madame Blavatsky lays out seven qualities to qualify for Chelaship. According to Madame Blavatsky and traditional schools, the Chela or initiate cannot undertake this path without a teacher or master, someone ahead of your current consciousness to help point out the way to enlightenment or God-realization. In some cases it may be that the disciple is evolved enough to hear the inner voice of the divine command, but in most cases a guide is invaluable. Today many people recoil at the words teacher, master, guru, etc. They scoff at these names and see those who adhere to them as weak or not in their own power. Of course this is true for some, but not for all. Those who scoff at these type of words generally have their channels open to some degree and don't feel they have to do anything more, or that they can just surf the web and find all they need to know. The highest teachings say there is no such thing as good or bad or right or wrong, which is true at the absolute level. However. These teachings are often misunderstood by people who have not yet restrained their ego and so use the teachings as an excuse to carry on different kinds of neurosis. This is why in the Hermetic life it is useful to have a guide to point out certain pitfalls. In light of this, let us review the seven qualities for Chelaship as put forth by Madame Blavatsky, who reformulated them from an ancient text said to be 2000 years old. Raj Yoga and Occultism 1. Perfect Physical Health Madame Blavatsky said it is difficult to find many who fit this description. The point is that the cello should at least be conscious and striving in this direction, with the awareness that the majority of health problems stem from unconscious habits, both mental and dietary, and it is precisely these habits that we must uproot if you want to become enlightened and true. For the new human, perfect radiant health is a necessary goal. If pursuit of perfect health isn't a top priority, then we are still unconscious. 2. Absolute mental and physical purity. This is another hard one to come by today. We live in a society that contains so much pollution in the environment, cell phones and computers, and numerous other attendant distractions. At present, the second quality indicates an acute environmental consciousness and the deliberate effort to live an organic, unpolluted life. The cella is always seeking a radial shift in consciousness where everything resolves into an absolute mental and physical purity. 3. Unselfishness of Purpose this trait can also be understood as universal charity and compassion for all beings. It's easier to come to this and develop it. But one must work at overcoming all tendencies of egoic selfish behavior. This is the whole point of compassion, charity and charitable behavior. 4. Truthfulness and unswerving faith in the law of karma. This is an important point that many people overlook. Many people think that they can say one thing, then do another, or say one thing and not really mean it. This type of behavior is in disregard of the law of karma. When we make promises and then don't follow through, this creates problems for others and for ourselves. It is rare to find truthful people who genuinely understand the laws of karma and so are capable of acting in a fearless manner. 5. Courage undaunted in every emergency even up to the point of giving your life. Few people have the courage of their convictions to really do what must be done in a selfless manner, to risk it all for the sake of truth. The point of recognizing one's own self to then abandon it for the sake of others. 6. Intuitional perception of one's being the vehicle of the manifested Avalokishvara 
or divine spirit. In other words, you really are a vehicle, an avatar of the unfoldment of the divine plan. Many people can see this and think they are really special. But how many can embody it? The Dalai Lama, for instance, is an embodiment of the Avalokitesvara, the Bodhisattva of compassion. Do you doubt it? Do you have the qualities of the Dalai Lama? Only you can say if that is true for you or not. Only you know if you have a calling for a higher path or order. Here again, the point is to embody non-egoic norms of behavior and to act in selfless ways. 7. Calm indifference or the just appreciation for everything that constitutes apparent reality. We must first distinguish between indifference as opposed to careless indifference. For example, you cannot be so indifferent that you do not take responsibility for your own life and rack up a bunch of speeding tickets. Yes, it is all a dream, but one with a system of penalties built into it. Calm indifference refers to bearing the slings and arrows of fate, the criticism and hostility of others, of being equanimous with loss or gain. Only people with clear perceptions of their role in the divine plan can truly cultivate this calm indifference, for they know they have nothing left to lose. These are high qualities even to begin the path. It is helpful to have a category of qualifications to reflect on. We are summarizing the teachings that have existed and the notions of stages of fellowship on the road to mastery, becoming a genuine human. But this is only the beginning. Beyond this, there are stages of the Master.